Okay, folks, we had a minor earthquake in South Carolina last night, and wouldn't you know it, the Caribbean plate woke back up. We had a 5.3 in the Dominican Republic, which is very large for the northeastern part of that plate. So let's just go ahead and put the entire Caribbean and Cocos Plate region back on watch. Uh, folks, there was actually a 4.5 earthquake not too far away from the Greek super volcano that we've had our eyes on. Don't forget, we're also watching out for one in Germany and one in Iceland as well. There was a landslide yesterday in Switzerland, and also one yesterday in the Philippines. And that one is said to be uh, pretty bad, undoubtedly caused by all the rainfall they've had there. You might be remembering that Solar Active Region 11391 was labeled Alpha yesterday, and we said that when they reclassified it for today, there was no way it would uh, still be Alpha, and they have labeled it Beta, uh, which we probably agree with here. Uh, it is fairly active, um, and let's watch for the far side of it to develop a little more. Right now we have this coronal hole, this dark uh, coronal hole pointed right at the Earth now. Uh, space weather doesn't think much of it, and frankly there's not much reason to argue. We have two to three days to watch, and we'll be watching the solar uh, wind telemetry from ACE to see whether or not we get a spike in uh, solar wind speed or solar wind density. Uh, something you might want to look out for right here, uh, this coronal hole is probably going to pick up a little coronal mass ejection that comes out of the region right uh, here where uh, the coronal hole meets the solar active region right here. You can see it's starting to erupt um, right here at the end of this video. As we come in here for a closer look, what we have to remember is even though this is small, uh, there is a fair amount of uh, ejecta that comes off of it and it will probably all be picked up by this coronal hole stream and just juice it up a bit more than it otherwise would have been. You might remember two days ago we were uh, happy to report that the critical frequencies had dropped in the F1 layer, still higher than they should be, but dropped from where they had been. And despite the fact that we haven't had any real horizontal disturbance on the uh, Fluxgate magnetometer uh, and ionospheric absorption has been completely normal, uh, for some reason the critical frequencies in the F1 layer are going back up again. Not really sure where this uh, extra ionization is coming from. But what we're going to do here folks, this is the last year of critical frequencies in the F1 layer and we're just going to take it back all the way for those of you who haven't seen it. Now what you're going to notice is it's just going to keep going down and down as we go back year by year. Um, and it really started to become scatterbrained around 2006. Uh, before that, it really represents this nice seasonal curve we have here. Uh, and as we get back into solar, uh, the last solar maximum in the early 2000s, you're going to see it start to go back up here, but uh, certainly nowhere near uh, where it is right now. And this would be the last solar maximum right there. And this would be just, you know, the preceding years. But look where we are now, folks. Uh, it's definitely something to watch out for. Uh, let's keep an eye on all this coming from the sun, folks. Be safe.